I am attempting another video. <clears throat> this time I've done a selfie. I've taken a picture of myself, strong contrast from the side, a uh, little bit of a three-quarter view, sketched it out here. And I'll see how this goes because I may have to start and stop, but I'm going to at least try to lay in, block in a kind of grisaille. People have been asking me, can they start with the grisaille? I think it's a good idea if you want to do that. And then build on top of that with your color. So depending on how much color you feel comfortable with in the beginning, I know that we've already established a precedent for doing a grisaille and for working in tone first. So with that in mind, I'm gonna to try to begin with some washes, just in terms of value on top of a simple pencil drawing. And we'll just see how it builds from there. So I may not keep a running dialogue going, so we'll just see where it goes. I can already see a strong <clears throat> sense of where the way, the way the head is turning. This, if you can tell from the photograph, right side is in light, left side, there we go, left side is in shadow. Just trying to go off of that in my photograph. Oh, texture. Check it out. I'm using maybe too much water, but I'm gonna see, I kinda like this crimson color on the left. I may bring that up more so it's more of an exaggerated color. And we'll see how far this goes. I'd like to bring this up to the whole pointless thing. This is the whole idea here. And see if I can really bring out the reds. You can see my ear especially, it's very crimsony. So I'd like that idea of bringing up the really bright reds in the shadows or in the shadow side, things that are in the direct light, and maybe bringing that out to um, the forefront, making it more of an issue, and separating that from the light colors. And I'll have to determine if I want that to be a peachy red, which I'm kind of leaning towards. I kind of like the idea of a strong separation of warm and cool. So a warm red and a cool red breaking it down to those two planes, those two definite sides. I notice I'm not worried too much about detail. Quite the opposite, I'm just trying to block in tone. I can always go back in and what I plan to do is I plan to go in and bring out the eyes once this wash dries, kind of redraw, go back. Even if I lose it, I can always redraw. So that's my game plan now is to just kind of get color down, start to have a foundation, and then I can always redraw on top of this to bring back the essentials. Okay, I've done a little more work on it. I have had to take a hair dryer on it because it was so wet. So I'm just going to hopefully tweak it a little bit, starting to just play around with refining the drawing, um, and starting to get a little bit of expression in the brushwork too. The whole pointless thing. So the pointless thing, if you look at the examples I send out, they can go anywhere from like George Surratt to Van Gogh. The Van Goghs are actually really beautiful if you look at them at how they're very controlled. It's more like cross contour, the way he uses the stroke, the brush stroke, but there's, it's a very visible brush stroke. Uh, to, I have, so pointillism, I'll let you interpret that, but is you should have some kind of a expressive mark, a visible stroke. Also with my hair, I can take advantage of 
some of the gray quality and some of the highlights. I'm doing this, I'm drawing too, so I'm working from dark to light, trying to establish the darks, working my way to light. A lot of strong expressive darks, especially on this left side of the face, that I want to try to get in and carve out the lights. But I'm trying to keep the brush mark visible too. I want those hatches, I want those marks which can be built up. I don't, I'm not trying to smooth everything out. That's the, the beauty of this too, is to allow it to remain. Because you can't always get things smoothly blended or perfectly blended. Also, I'm playing up a lot of the drama where the left side is shadowed. Um, and I want that to stay dark, but I don't want it to be dark and dingy. I want it to have color to it. So that's why I'm gonna maybe play up the blues purples in the shadows. And I can even make it even more expressively purple. So it's up to you how, com how comfortable you feel with color, if you want to push it, um, if you want to keep it natural. If you look at people like Van Gogh, those are, he really pushed the palette. I mean, that's a really exaggerated palette. Very intense color, a lot of saturated color. that looks like. What's nice about this brush, I might add, <clears throat> is that it, it keeps a really sharp point. So it, it's, it's nice to use it this way, since I want the hatch to show, I want the stroke or the mark. Now, all this area I'm saving so I'm kind of working my way to that, to the lighter, fleshier tones. So I'm, I'm trying to ex extend it as far as I can because the whole side of the face, or the whole left side is shadowed. So I am gonna see what this looks like. This is like a, oh, rust color, it's a very strong orange. Let's see how this looks if I introduce it, if it's too shocking. So I'm saving the lights for last. I'm really working towards, like when we did our still lives, I'm working towards the highlights and hopefully that'll give it a little extra pop too. If I had time, this I really personally like cross hatching, so I love doing this. I could go over this and over this, and you could really build up, if you're patient enough, you could build up a really rich network of marks, one on top of the other. They're usually made of this kind of lacy spider work of hundreds of, of marks, brush strokes and whatnot. I'm gonna start adding some lights. So even here on the nose, tiptoeing around I'm trying to keep the structure in place being a little bit stingy with the lights also if you don't know about cross hatching I'm also trying to go in a slightly different direction than the mark that's underneath it I want them both to show but I don't want them to overlap to the point of just repeating themselves or meshing. Okay, I've worked down a little bit more of the lights and I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit of a highlight. I talked about 10 and two yesterday. Can't decide, this was pretty dark, so I'm just gonna a little bit of a highlight. 
just to give it a glimmer. And on the nose. Yeah, I mentioned earlier in the earlier video that if you have a strong highlight on the nose, you'll really get it to pop forward from the facial plane. I'm working it through. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to beat this too bad or to take it too much further. But you can see I've added some stronger lights. That's why I was that's why I was working towards the lightest lights. And I do like the fact that it's very minimal. That's why I wanted a very strong directional light. Uh, I started to play around with the, the hatching in the shirt. And so you can see it does have this kind of kinetic quality. And, and I'm not going to, you know, if I have time, I'm losing my light. I can, I can take it even further, and hopefully you will too. And I actually find this very enjoyable. It's a very enjoyable technique. Uh, the pointillism, hatching, whatever you want to call it. I, see, I call it pointillism. Um, but, you know, that's why if you look at the examples I provide, especially the Van Goghs, you'll see in the same method. It's very much a drawing technique, too, of building up mark upon mark, but changing each mark. Each mark is slightly different. You can see here, even hopefully you can see, as the face is being built, there are tonal color changes. You know, the color's exaggerated a little bit, but um, each mark or each successive layer of color adds something to it, so it builds. It's a building process adding and you're adding and you're working it up to a certain level of finish so just keep in mind too of working dark to light you know if you want to work from the dark side to light side I highly recommend that um, and, and just be very stingy with your lights be very stingy with what's going to get a pure white you want to be able to have enough saturated color that's interesting it has a richness to it and then see how that builds you can have it diluted, you can have it thinned down, and then you can work it layer on top of layer. You can have fatter brush strokes if you want, like here if I wanted to in the background. Instead of having the thin hatches like in the face, I could have maybe something a little bit more wider or expressive. Notice too I'm using a cooler color in the background to play off the warmth in the face. But this is a quick demo. I know some people were curious about how to get started. You know, having a good uh, source or photographic source is critical. And hopefully I've approved your drawing or your photograph, I'm sorry. And then, you know, sketch it out. Begin with the gazai, just because that's what we've been doing. And then at a certain point, work from the darks. Start adding a, your darker colors. Work through the dark tones. Leave the marks. Don't worry about covering them up. You know, watch what kind of brush you're using. You know, I'm using uh, something that's a little bit more pointed, so I'm cheating a bit here. But I do find that this helps give me a consistent mark. Whatever works for you, whatever it gives you a consistent mark that you feel like you're controlling, that it's not controlling you, but you're controlling the mark, that's critical. That you have control over the, the medium. Because it's very frustrating if you feel the other way around where the medium is controlling you. And then just let it build. And see where it goes. And I think that was that's what makes it a very enjoyable process. But keep your drawing instincts in place about working dark to light, working from medium tones to highlights. Try to get things a volumetric or a rounded quality, and see how it goes. Good luck.